They didn't just add a new big number horsepower badge. Mercury quietly rebuilt almost everything from the tiny portables to the V10 Verados, and even the all-electric Avatar line. Battery-free EFI on the small stuff, jet pumps for rivers, Sea Pro workhorses, digital controls, and offshore flagships all stitched into one system. Sounds like just another glossy catalog year, right? But here's the twist. This lineup isn't about one hero motor. It's about making every step on the ladder feel easier, smarter, and more connected. Whether you're pushing a tinny on a weekend lake or a loaded center console offshore. By the end of this video, you'll see which 2026 engines are just brochure filler and which ones are quietly rewriting what boaters will expect for the next decade. Let's dive into Mercury's 2026 outboard lineup and expose what actually matters once you leave the dock. Number 10, battery-free, portable, four strokes. Look at the boats leaning against the shoreline of a small lake and you will see the same ritual that has existed for decades. A small outboard pulled from a shed, fueled, choked, and coaxed until it comes to life. For generations, that was how boating started for nearly everyone. A simple machine, a few basic habits, and a little trial and error. Mercury's portable four-stroke engines in the two and a half horsepower to roughly 10 horsepower range shift that ritual. These compact motors now use battery-free electronic fuel injection on key models, which means no external battery, far cleaner cold starts, and less sensitivity to fuel that might not be perfect. Instead of depending on the owner's memory of a mixing ratio or a choke setting, the engine manages its own air and fuel balance. The effect is subtle on paper, but dramatic on the water. The little engines run cleaner, respond more predictably, and tolerate the kind of casual treatment that used to punish older designs. Someone who only uses a boat on a handful of weekends no longer needs the skills of a small engine mechanic to keep the day from turning into frustration. These portables keep their core, purpose lightweight, handheld, easy to mount on dinghies, canoes, tenders, car toppers, and tiny fishing rigs. But they behave more like shrunken, full-sized outboards than the fickle little machines of the past. For new boaters, or for the families who only visit the cabin a few times each year, this solves problems so common they were barely acknowledged. And as soon as people stop fighting with the smallest engines, they start looking at the water differently. They get curious about boats with decks and storage and live wells. Suddenly, the idea of a real outboard does not feel nearly as intimidating. Number nine, small and mid-range four-stroke workhorses. There is a moment in boating when someone steps away from the world of tenders and dinghies and into something meant for full days on the water. Maybe it is a 14-foot aluminum fishing rig. Maybe a small pontoon meant for after-dinner cruises. Maybe a compact center console that finally feels like a real boat. Whatever the shape, that moment brings a need that cannot be ignored anymore. The engine is no longer a backup plan or an accessory. It becomes the piece of machinery the entire day hinges on. Mercury's small and mid-range four stroke lineup, spanning from roughly 15 horsepower through the middle of the 60 horsepower class, lives precisely at that crossroads. These engines do not chase headlines. They do not dominate brochures. They do not pretend to be race motors. They simply behave the way boaters actually need engines to behave. Start cleanly, idle calmly, and run efficiently at the everyday speeds where real boating happens. The shift to electronic fuel delivery has quietly changed more about these motors than many owners realize. Gone is the guesswork of carburetor adjustments, the ritual of priming and choking, the cold morning sputter that used to define small outboards. In its place is predictable, consistent throttle response that does not care if the air is hot, cold, humid, or thin. These engines settle into a smooth rhythm, whether the boat is lightly loaded or carrying coolers, gear, and an extra guest or two. The serviceability is part of the design rather than an afterthought. Oil changes are straightforward. Filters are accessible. An owner with a basic tool kit and a weekend afternoon can keep most of the regular maintenance up to date. And because these models appear across docks, marinas, and boat ramps everywhere, parts support is as stable as it gets. The real power of this segment does not show up on a dyno chart. It shows up in the places these engines quietly work. The boats that tow kids after dinner. The rigs bringing two anglers into the morning fog. The pontoons putting along a shoreline at sunset. These motors do not shout about what they do. They simply show up every time the key turns. And for many boaters, after years years of dependable days on calm lakes and predictable waters, a new curiosity starts to grow. Places with current, rocks, gravel bars, or water so thin you could swear a boat should not even float in it begin to look tempting instead of dangerous. That curiosity leads to a category of engine built for an entirely different kind of water. Number 8. Factory Jet Outboards. There are rivers and back channels you can understand with a single glance. Water shoals quickly, rocks crowd together in places no propeller has any business exploring. Narrow cuts open into wide shelves, only a few inches deep. 
in stretches like these. A traditional outboard with a skeg and propeller sitting below the hull feels like glassware carried across a gravel driveway. Every turn becomes a risk. Every misjudged foot of depth has consequences. This is where Mercury's factory jet outboards reveal their purpose. Built upon the same four-stroke powerheads found in the propeller-driven lineup, these engines swap the entire propeller and gear case assembly for a jet pump. Instead of a spinning blade waiting to strike something unseen, the pump draws water upward, pressurizes it, and forces it out through a nozzle tucked high and safe behind the transom. No vulnerable skeg, no fragile propeller, much less to break when the riverbed rises fast faster than expected. The trade-offs are well understood among people who run these waters. Jet outboards sacrifice some efficiency, top speeds fall, fuel burn climbs. But what you gain in return is access. The kind of access that turns we cannot go there into we can reach that stretch easily. For aluminum river sleds, rescue craft, shallow water hunting rigs, and utility boats that must run unpredictable terrain at unpredictable hours. This capability is not a luxury. It is the difference between making the run and turning back. Factory-built solutions matter here. Many boaters have tried jet conversion kits bolted onto standard lower units, only to chase vibration, cavitation, or alignment issues for months. A purpose-built jet outboard avoids all of that. The pump, intake, and powerhead are engineered engineered as a single system, warrantied as one piece, and meant to survive exactly the environment where propeller motors struggle. For the people who live on rivers, where missing the right line by a foot can put you on gravel, that reliability becomes part of the boat's daily identity. The engine is no longer a delicate object to protect. It is a tool meant to scrape, slide, and survive. And once boaters experience the freedom of shallow water without fear, they often realize something interesting. Not every breakthrough is about running farther upstream or deeper into back channels. Some breakthroughs change what happens once you arrive, when the boat's motion becomes the difference between a clean pass and a wasted drift. That shift brings another branch of Mercury's lineup into focus. If this tour through the 2026 lineup has stirred questions about your own boat, your water, or your engine hours, ask away in the comments. Real situations help shape these guides. And if walking through the lineup like this is making the options clearer than a catalog ever could, a simple like tells me this deeper approach is worth continuing. You should also subscribe if you want the upcoming breakdowns. Number seven, pro kicker and command thrust specialists. There are days on the water when speed does not matter at all, when the engine is not asked to get anyone anywhere quickly, when the boat moves at a controlled crawl, barely above idle, following contour lines, slipping along weed edges, or holding a straight path against wind and subtle current. On those days, the person at the helm is not commanding the boat, they are negotiating with it, and only a very specific type of engine can turn the those negotiations into quiet cooperation. Mercury's Pro Kicker series in the 9.9 .9 horsepower class exists for precisely this kind of day. These engines are engineered to live at extremely low revolutions per minute without loading up, wandering, or stumbling. They maintain vacuum, combustion, and lubrication in places where most outboards begin to foul or complain. Their gear cases are geared not for acceleration, but for slow speed authority that makes the boat stay on track instead of drifting subtly offline. High in Mercury's lineup, the command thrust gear case creates a different kind of control for mid-range force strokes. By swinging larger diameter propellers at lower gear ratios, these engines provide more grip, more steering input, and more stability at modest speeds. Heavy aluminum multi-species rigs, loaded pontoons, and center consoles with tall freeboard all benefit in the same way. When the wind rises or current rolls around a point, the boat keeps its attitude without wandering off course. What makes these engines interesting is how quiet they shape an entire fishing day. When the boat tracks cleanly, the spread stays organized, the lines ride properly, the angler at the bow gets more workable passes without fighting the hull. The engine does not just move the boat, it removes distractions from the experience, and there is a natural effect that follows. Once boaters trust their engines to hold the boat steady in wind, current, and tight quarters, they begin to push into more ambitious conditions. They look at larger water, heavier loads, longer runs, and harsher environments. That confidence creates a new set of demands demands that another part of Mercury's lineup was built to handle. Number six, Sea Pro commercial four strokes. If the average recreational outboard lives a few dozen hours a year, a commercial Sea Pro engine might see that in a single busy week. These engines are built for boats that run at dawn, return at dusk, and carry people or heavy equipment on nearly every trip. To survive that life, Sea Pro powerheads are engineered with heavier internal components, conservative tuning, reinforced gear cases, and validation testing far beyond what weekend users will ever 
ever inflict. The design assumption is simple. The engine will be pushed, ignored, run at uneven loads, and asked to perform in conditions where downtime is not acceptable. Guide boats trust them. Rental fleets trust them. Patrol skiffs trust them. Their owners do not treat engines gently, but they do treat reliability with respect. When a Pro engine logs thousands of hours and still shows healthy compression, people notice. What surprises many recreational owners is how well a Pro behaves in private use. When a machine designed for daily abuse is instead run on weekends with clean fuel and ordinary loads, its lifespan stretches dramatically. It is overbuilt in ways you only appreciate once you realize how often you are not coming close to its limits. But when a boat grows beyond local lakes and protected rivers, when it starts facing open bays, heavy chop, or long family trips, the need for more refined power appears. That is when owners start looking toward the larger four-stroke family. Number five, big four-stroke recreational engines. Walk up to a 20-foot or 22-foot hull and the scale changes. These boats carry more people, more gear, more electronics, and more expectations. Their owners want engines that are powerful enough to push heavy loads, but predictable enough that operating them never feels like a chore. Mercury's large four-stroke models, living roughly in the mid-200 horsepower range and above, fill that role. They are often chosen by families who want a serious boat without stepping into the full luxury or full performance segments. The engines are built with enough display to make rated power without running at the absolute edge of their limits. The technology is more comprehensive at this size. Charging systems keep up with multiple screens, live wells, radar, audio systems, and night lighting. Noise and vibration control matter more. Mid-range thrust becomes a safety feature rather than a convenience. These engines are built for boats that spend real days offshore, cross exposed bays, and return home after winds pick up. What makes this part of the lineup meaningful is how approachable it feels. You get the power and capability ability necessary for larger water without the intimidation factor or the maintenance expectations of top-tier engines. And speaking of top-tier engines, Mercury has created something for the boaters who want it all refinement, control, and enough horsepower to lift large hulls with authority. Number four, V10 Verado powerhouses. When you stand on the platform of a modern offshore boat and stare at a row of tall, sculpted cowlings, you sense immediately that something has changed. These engines do not behave like oversized versions of mid range outboards. They carry themselves differently, with a quiet confidence that comes from the way they are built. The size is not the whole story. The seriousness is, these powerheads are designed for the kind of boating where long miles, heavy seas, and full crews are the rule rather than the exception. Mercury's Ivais 10 Verado family sits at the center of that shift. Built around a naturally aspirated 5.7 liter V10 block, the architecture is chosen not for shock value, but because it delivers something offshore boats crave. Smooth, repeatable thrust across a wide power band. Instead of relying on forced induction to chase peak numbers, the displacement itself provides the steadiness. In multi-engine setups, the effect is unmistakable. Large center consoles and offshore hulls lift cleanly, stay on plane longer, and respond with composure instead of drama. What truly changes the experience, though, is the control philosophy wrapped around the power. Mercury's digital steering removes the mechanical wandering that once made big boats feel heavy in crosswinds electronic throttle and shift, erase the hesitation and stiffness that cables always introduced, and joystick piloting allows movements that once felt like tricks reserved for seasoned captains. Boats rotate, crab sideways, and settle against docks with a confidence that surprises first-time owners. You sense that the engineers were aiming not for spectacle, but for making large boat handling feel intuitive. Long run comfort becomes part of the story. Noise mitigation is not an afterthought. It is baked into the design. Vibration damping is engineered into the mounts and internal geometry, making the engines feel calmer at idle and steadier when the boat is slicing through offshore chop. Instead of the deep rumbling fatigue that used to define long runs, the hours pass with far less wear on the people aboard. Heavy loads no longer feel like a strain. Long distances stop being a negotiation between speed and comfort. In short, these engines bring authority rather than aggression, the kind of power that does not shout to be noticed, but reveals itself each time the boat shoulders through a wave or asks for more throttle without hesitation. And while internal combustion remains the backbone of the offshore category, Mercury's approach is shifting. These engines are no longer isolated machines running blind, only reacting, 
they are becoming participants, tied into systems that communicate, interpret, and prepare. Which is why the next part of the lineup matters as much as the horsepower itself. Number three, Smartcraft and the digital backbone. There was a time when the only feedback an outboard gave you was a sound, a vibration, or a warning buzzer. Anything else required a wrench, experience, or luck. The digital control era turns that on its head. Mercury's suite of digital systems ties engines into a network that monitors fuel burn, trim position, oil pressure, battery performance, and dozens of other metrics. Digital throttle and shift eliminate the hesitation and cable stretch that used to define mechanical controls. Engine data flows into multifunction displays that show range, performance, and potential issues long before they become failures. Multi-engine setups coordinate themselves. Speed control can hold to within fractions of a mile per hour. Alerts are specific instead of vague. Boat behavior becomes predictable because the engine is no longer a closed box of mysteries. It is a system that tells you what it needs. This shift changes how people maintain their boats. Problems are caught early. Owners make decisions based on data rather than fear or guesswork. And as engines become more transparent, they become easier to trust, which is exactly what Mercury needs people to feel. Because one part of the lineup requires trust of a very different kind. Trust in a powerhead with no cylinders, no valves, and no fuel tank at all. Number two, Avatar all electric outboards. Electric outboards have existed for a long time, but they rarely reached beyond trolling motors or niche experiments. Mercury's Avatar family changes that dynamic by presenting an entire series of electric outboards built for real day-to-day -day use on small boats. These engines are compact, modular, and remarkably simple. Batteries slide in and out. Controls are intuitive. Power output is enough to replace traditional gasoline engines on short-distance trips, urban waterways, small lakes, canals, and quiet fishing stretches, where noise matters more than speed. For those environments, the benefits are immediate. Nearly silent operation, no exhaust fumes, virtually no maintenance, and instant smooth torque. Electric outboards open up early morning fishing after dark cruising and lakes with strict regulations that prohibit gasoline engines entirely. They are not a replacement for large internal combustion engines and are not intended to be, but they represent a meaningful shift in how propulsion is offered. Mercury is not treating electric boating as an afterthought. It is treating it as a second track that will grow alongside traditional engines instead of competing against them. And once you see portables, mid-range engines, jet units, C-Pro workhorses, Verado flagships, and electric outboards all tied into one ecosystem, you begin to see the real revolution here. Number one, the 2026 lineup as a complete system. Boaters often look at outboards one at a time. One engine, one horsepower number, one hull. But Mercury's 2026 26 lineup is not built around isolated products. It is built around a philosophy that boating is becoming more diverse, more connected, and more user-friendly. At the small end, portable four-strokes remove the intimidation that used to define tiny engines and invite more people onto the water. Mid-range four-strokes give first-time owners a dependable, predictable backbone for everyday boating. Jet engines turn risk into access, while Pro Kicker and Command thrust motors support precision fishing in a way older engines never could. C Pro engines embrace the abuse that heavy commercial work brings, while larger four-strokes offer serious power without overwhelming the average owner. Verado engines refine the experience, so power feels like control instead of complication. Smartcraft systems transform engines into living instruments that tell you how they are doing, not just how fast they are turning. And Avatar engines point toward a quieter, cleaner path, where certain lakes, certain cities, and certain future boaters could choose electric without compromise. Put these together, and you see the shift. Outboard motors are no longer just engines. They are tools, systems, and choices that let owners evolve without leaving the brand or the ecosystem. A boater might start with a small portable at a cabin and end up years later running twin Verados offshore, all while navigating familiar controls and service networks. That continuity is intentional. It is what turns a lineup into an environment. That is why 2026 20, feels like a moment rather than a number. It is not one breakthrough. It is the foundation for whatever comes next. After looking across these engines, the pattern is clear. The real changes are not in the wildest horsepower ratings or the flashiest decals. They live in the decisions that make boating easier to start, easier to learn, and easier to keep enjoying for years. That is what lasts. That is what actually changes the water for the average owner. Now I want to hear from you. What are you running today? How many hours does it have? And which piece of the 2026 lineup honestly interests you the most? Share it in the comments. If this helped you make sense of the catalog, instead of getting lost in it, tap like so I know to keep building these deep dives. And if you want the coming breakdowns on choosing the right engine and stretching its lifespan into decades, subscribe so you do not miss a thing.